Welcome everyone to St. Louis, the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Championship game. The two top teams in the Valley. Number one seed Loyola, number two seed Drake. And we've got the two big men in there going hand to hand. The player of the year for Loyola in the conference, Cameron Frutwig. He'll go up today against Darnell Brody, the Seton Hall transfer. And that shot outside by Keith Clemens with Loyola on top now by one. With Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan, the winner here, an automatic bid, Dan, to the NCAA tournament. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to leave anything in the hands of the committee, particularly with people talking about both of these teams possibly being on the bubble. If you win, you eliminate off that talk. Drake comes in 25 and 3, the second most wins of any team in college basketball. Brody in there, tied to go, win against Williamson of the Ramblers, and a foul called on Lucas Williamson. This is a really good job. Drake spreads the floor. They create a mismatch on the inside because Crutwick get, doesn't really get around the screen very effectively. And Brody is a big guy. Six feet ten, 275 pounds, and if he's going to score inside effectively, that makes Drake a very dangerous team. If you're just picking up this tournament with Drake now on top by two, Drake is without their leading scorer and their leading assist man. They both got injured. The score should return, they say, if they make the tournament. The assist man is out. More on those stories as we go along. Here comes Loyola, the great story from a couple years ago. And the 2018 run to the Final Four. But they make a turnover right there. And the Bulldogs come the other way with a very short lineup. They don't have much depth. These starters, Dan, are going to see a lot of minutes today. They're going to see a lot of minutes, and they played a lot of minutes yesterday. We'll see how that impacts the game. Shot clock is down to 10. Wilkins gets it to Brody. Picked up there by Crutwick. The two big men head to head. Crutwick 25, the player of the year in the conference. And he played it well, and a foul called on the Bulldog center. Yosifu is the catalyst right now for Drake. He is the guard. And down low, you see very decorated players. Lucas Williamson, the defensive player of the year in the conference. And Dan, the player of the year, as we mentioned, Crutwig, the fourth-year senior. Kevin, and you already mentioned that that matchup between the big guys, between Brody and Crutwig, is going to have a lot to say about the outcome of this game. Drake, so, Drake is also in a man-to-man -man to start. So Loyola is 23-4. and four. They won the conference at 16-2 and two in the regular season. Here's Williamson on top. Sturts has him. Screen by Crutwick, and he'll take that long shot and nail it. He's uh, had a double-double game the other night with uh, a win over Indiana State. Crutwick's not really a jump shooter. He can make the jump shot, but most of his stuff is right around the goal. That's Tramel Murphy. Bulldogs come in 25 and 3, second place in the Valley, and back with the Ramblers of Loyola Chicago at 15 and 3. So the top two teams head to head. Norris, 3. Rebound inside. Was pulled down by a block. Hit the deck. Whistle. With a look at Porter Mosier, 10th year with Chicago. The Ramblers of Loyola, a team that uh, has had great success this season and a nice run here over the last couple of years. Yusufu brings it the other way. Over the last six games, he has averaged 25 points a game. This is from outside. Crutwick, the rebound. Yusufu can really get down the court, and Drake would like to make this a transition game if they can. Right inside, the floater is up and in. We've seen, we've seen Loyola take a couple of three-point shots, and they can shoot the three. They're a little inconsistent from beyond the arc, but Kevin, they shoot 59% as a team from two-point range. And that's where they're at their best. 
Make the number two seed for the second time in three seasons. Hurts inside, shot clock at seven. Williamson, the defensive player, almost had that ball. Getting tangled up there, Wilkins. He's in a straight jacket and gets free, but the shot clock buzzer goes off. And defense there for the number one defensive team in terms of points allowed in college basketball, Loyola Chicago. Tied at seven, early in St. Louis. Schedule the teams would play black back to back games at one spot. Both of the games were played at Drake in the first game. Uh, Loyola scored 81 points, won decisively in the second game. Drake won 51 to 50. One of the keys was the three point shooting for Loyola. They shot almost 50 percent the first time, 20 percent the second time. Double changes for Loyola Chicago. Tate Hall and Marcus Kennedy are both in. This is Kennedy, down low to Crutwich. With the shot clock at six, and that elegant little spinner right there will not drop, and it's picked up by Yesifu, who is out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. What Brody has to do against Crutwick inside is simply make Crutwick shoot over him every time. Sturge outside, Yesifu three. The two Ramblers bumping into each other. If you're joining us late, the Bulldogs without their top scorer and their top assist man, both injured, both out, and so they've had to uh, rejigger things. The Bulldogs had and bring guys off the bench, including last year's sixth man of the year in the conference. Yes, sir. He starts. I mean, he has he's been very effective since he stepped into the starting role, and that's been a big key to the Drake's success. Wilkins down low. Cody inside. Pick up with the rebound by Marquise Kennedy. Five consecutive wins for the Ramblers. They have won 15 of 16 games. This was a beautiful pass by Tate Hall into the player of the year in the conference, Cameron Crutwig. And you just simply, you can't leave Crutwig on the inside like that. You'd rather have Tate Hall take and drive it to the basket and take a contested shot than double team him and leave Crutwig alone. Cross court, Wilkins with the athletic catch. With the spinner inside up and off. Braden Norris the other way for the Rambler. Number 20 in the country. That's a three. Norris from outside. Boy, and that's that's danger. That's a danger sign for Drake, and they immediately take a timeout. They're going to make it. As the coach of the Bulldogs, he already is a two-time Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year, including this year. So he had a 17-year run as assistant at Creighton. He has come in and taken this Bulldog program to another level. And here comes Sturtz as the Bulldogs beat Missouri State yesterday in the semifinals in a game that had 16 lead changes. They won by two. Shot clock at seven. Yesifu is hounded way outside in the defense by Kennedy. And a foul called on Marquise Kennedy, his first. Now, Kennedy is a guy who comes off the bench active, aggressive. He's a pretty good defender, gets a lot of steals. That time, that was a mistake, putting that much physical pressure on a guy that far from the basket with the shot clock almost out. But we is on the bench. Jacob Hudson has taken his place, played well. He has him hacked away right there. Did he play? Tate Hall was with the fence and made the good move, and that triggers the break the other way with Braden Norris. This is Tate. This match inside. Kennedy will take it in. A lot of blue jerseys in there defending. Nice knock right there. Good offensive rebound by Hudson. Keeps it alive. Wide open three. Kennedy. And the rebound by Samaka. Boy, Hudson at 6'10". Was trying to post up against the 6'2 Wilkins, and the Ramblers never found him on the inside. They settled for that long jump shot. Three straight 20 win seasons for the first time in 50 years for Drake. Quite a season, quite a run so far. Way outside, shot by Jonah Jackson. Won't go. The block has the rebound. Norris the other way. Drake never got the ball inside the three point line in their entire possession. T Hall. Right 
imagine that they're number 20 in the country to go inside. Picked up there. Hudson, count it, count it, fight. So Micah is the one to hit him. As Hudson is a freshman from Edina, Minnesota. He's a 6'10 freshman, backs up Crutwig, and you can see here Kennedy's lob, perfect, into the freshman for two. He'll go to the line when we come back to St. Louis. It's the NCAA tournament, and the road to the Final Four will take us to Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It will see the best of college basketball in this very strange and uneven season that they have worked through. The Missouri Valley Conference, it should be noted, Dan, is the only conference, major conference in college basketball to get every regular season game in. Well, they did, and that was an impressive feat. And ironically, they lost the game in this tournament because of COVID. But a lot of teams have played a lot of games in a short period of time, but they did a great job getting it in. Brody is inside, missed the first. Brody going up against the freshman. Frutwig continues to sit and rest with a whistle and a foul inside. 11-12 to play here in the first half. Loyola picks up the foul. It goes on Lucas Williamson, who picks up his second personal, the defensive player of the year in the conference. The fact that Brody is back in the game for Drake and Crutwig remains on the bench is a perfect indication of the kind of confidence that Porter Mosier suddenly has. Murphy at the line tonight. Oprah Winfrey sits down with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for an interview where no subject is off limits. Oprah with Megan and Harry, a primetime special. That's tonight at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Kevin, what I was saying is that that's the kind of confidence that Porter Mosier has in Hudson. You mentioned him before. Generally, when they play against Drake, if Brody's out of the game, then Crutwig's out of the game. But if Brody's in, Crutwig's in there defending it. Mentioned before that the Ramblers of Loyola are number 20 in college basketball. That's their ranking. Ranked for the fourth consecutive week. They hadn't been ranked in the polls in a season since 1985. But for the last month, they've been in the AP Top 25. Braden Norris got the screen. Shot clock at 8. The defense by Wilkins. Switch on D. Hall. And it's a nice turnover with the defensive break right there. It's a different kind of offensive setup for Loyola when Crutwig was out is out of the game. They basically run things through. Wilkins wide open three. DJ Wilkins, a two-year starter. He's a two-year starter, and over 60% of his field goal attempts are from three, so you have to get out on him. He has not shot the ball well recently, but he is an excellent three-point shooter. They've gone 0 of 7 until that hit. Break now to within three. North on top, here comes Tate Hall. Good block from Molly. In the corner. That's a three, and it's right down the hatch. Keith Clemens, a senior from Norcross, Georgia. And they just banged Clemens with a technical foul. He said something to somebody. It was right in front of Jerry Pollard. <laughs> Porter Mosier better be careful because he might get another one. This is really good passing. You have to respect Norris's ability to shoot the three. They cover him with two guys, and Clemens hits that jump shot. And right in front of the official said something to Wilkins. That's a T, and here comes Yesifu to the free throw line. So the three by Clemens, he has now made 31 of his last 60 three-point attempts. The check on Clemens. Now that last game between these two teams, that 51 to 50 game, they really went at one another. It was an uphill battle for Drake all the way. They were able to force it to overtime, and they won right at the end. And there was some hard feelings between the two teams after that game. And maybe we're seeing some of that extending over here, but Wilkins went flying at Clemens, and Clemens made the shot and had something to say. And by the way, we have a decorated crew officiating this one amongst the best in the country. John Higgins, 25 tournaments, 17 regionals, eight Final Fours. Jerry Pollard, 18 tournaments, six regionals, and Kit Kissinger, 11 NCAAs, four regional finals. A great crew here in St. Louis for the championship game of the Missouri Valley Conference. 
It sees number one against number two. A block with some great defense. They come the other way. Clemens for two. Well, Lukak is, he is one of the best defensive players in the league. Williamson is the all-defensive, is the defensive player. The Urban Ublock is on the all-defensive team as well. Norris knocked it away, and Ublock is the one to finish it at the other end. Great transition, and right now, Loyola, their biggest lead of eight. Inside, Yesifu, more defense. Crutwig is in. Here comes Braden Norris from Hilliard, Ohio. He puts it up and in. Wow. They've opened it up, and defense has been the calling card. Defense has been, Kevin, that the last time these teams played, when Drake won the game 51-50, to Loyola had a 10-point lead. But Drake tightened up on the defense, and that's what you have to do. You just you, you have to somehow find a way to score a basket, but then don't turn the ball over and give up those easy opportunities. Drake won for their last nine. Sturts. Yes, a free. And Wilkins, Brody on top, Crutwood gives him some space, shot clock at six, they switch, and they climb inside, Wilkins. And looks like Murphy probably tapped it up and in on the miss by Wilkins. Now you don't need to score all the time off that dribble penetration, you just draw the defense and that creates lanes for offensive rebounders, and Murphy did a nice job just following the ball. Number one seed in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Here is a three. Kennedy. Brody's got the ball. Bulldogs the other way. 25 wins, the second most in college basketball. Back at Belmont. Gonzaga's got 24. Drake's got 25. Belmont, 26. Brody dancing with Crutley. Crudwick has been playing off Brody as long as Brody's playing outside the lane, but if Brody's going to make that shot, and he's capable of making it, but if he makes that shot on a consistent basis, that'll draw Crudwick away from the basket and open up some additional driving room. Whistle on the wing. Was it uh, Uguak who picked up perhaps the foul? So let's see here. Sturts, I think. Sturts got the foul. Sturts picks it up for the Drake Bulldogs. Cut to the basket. One thing, Kevin, that I've seen early in the game, Loyola taking an awful lot of three-point shots. Crudwig really hasn't handled the ball as much early in this game as you often see him do. Clemens, Crudwig. Outside, the shot by Tate Hall is off. Ready retrieves. The Ramblers of Loyola and White are the top five teams in all of college basketball in shooting. Crutwig adds a lot to that. Brody on top. Wilkins, three. D.J. Wilkins. That helps right there. It's a three-point game. Kevin and Cody Mosier's now going to call yep. a timeout. He Phil Kogan hosts the new Toughest Nails Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, here on CBS. It began 0-4 from 3, now 2 of their last 2, a 7-0 run. The number 2 seed Drake in blue, and there is a foul, and it goes on Loyola in white, the number 1 seed. Uh, Tate Hall picks up yep. the foul for an illegal screen. So Hall will pick up his first personal foul. With the ball is Yesifu. In the mid-major poll, Drake is number five. Gonzaga number one, Loyola number two, and Drake number five in the mid-major poll. Two highly thought of teams right here. And the team in blue, Drake, without their leading score, is his man. Murphy going down low, trying to chisel his way. The defense there by Clemens. Wilkins, outside, yes, a three. Get it. Big shot, times the game, a three. It's 24 apiece. Boy, that 10-point lead disappeared Ooh, quickly, didn't it? <laughs> How about that? Well, Loyola has cooled off, but I think the reason they've cooled off is the shot selection, plus the fact that Drake stopped turning it over and giving them easy baskets. Clemens... It's Kennedy, Crutwig, Brody there, quick hedge by Yesifu. Let's see if they do it again. 
Brody and Cutler down the mm, gentle in the cross. But that's where the ball has to go. Crudwig is either going to make a move or he's going to pass. Crudwig has played 11 minutes, has eight points. Clemens has eight for Loyola. They go inside. Sturts fumbles it away. Great defensive play. The dive by Norris. And here come the Ramblers. But what a great decision by Crudwig. He looked like he was going to try to take a, make, make a full court outlet pass there. And at the last minute decided not to. Tade Hall, beautiful three from outside. And Dan, he had only been one of his last 15 from three. But that time, he hits the triple. He's got his first basket of the game. That's a three. Pickpocketed for the defense of Brayden Norris is there. Tom Court transition points. It's Kennedy. Right, and there's that outlet pass that uh, Crudwick didn't make the last time, but did make this time. Loyola is on a 7-0 run, and it's been a game of runs so far. It has in Loyola. They've been able to score effectively when, they're, when they get good shots. So shot selection is extremely important for the Ramblers. The best defensive teams in the country, Loyola, Crutwick in there, chopping away. Ray Norris was in there, too. Looks like Crutwick is going to pick this one up. Well, a great defensive play in there. Crutwick, what a, that's a Wes Unseld-like outlet pass. <laughs> that's a good name there. How about that? Crutwick gets his first personal foul. Bulldogs at the line with D.J. Wilkins. Bulldogs are the number one scoring team in the Missouri Valley Conference. They're number two overall in shooting in the conference. And number three in three-point shooting. And they go back to Jacob Hudson. Crutwig will take a seat on the bench. And he has uh, just uh, the one foul so far with his eight points and three rebounds. Brody's going to take a break too, Dan. You were talking about this before the game. Well, these coaches, I think they really try to keep those guys in the game right. against one another. But the last time Crudwig went out, uh, Loyola wasn't afraid to get the ball inside to Hudson. And Jacob Hudson, over his last couple of games, he's played more. And he's averaging almost five points a game. Five-point game. It is late as been ten. That was by Loyola. Which arms out. Now Kennedy. Five consecutive winning seasons for Loyola. Last time that happened, five straight back in the 40s. Beautiful shot outside. Man, that was perfect. That was, was perfect. That was some kind of maneuvering by Kennedy. He went past about four guys, got himself in the lane, drew the defense. That is a really good assist. Norris with the three. Outside that shot won't go. Even rebound by Clemens. First place team, regular season champion, Royal. Look at the drive right there by the freshman Hudson. Climbing in with the whistle. And a timeout. Three and a half. Excuse me, eight points, two rebounds, and three assists. And sometimes his assists are the most important part of this game. He is a great facilitator out there for Loyola. Their offense basically runs through him when he's in the game. A little full court pressure here. Now it subsides. Very choppy, Dan. First half. A lot of timeouts taken by Drake. Well, Drake really felt like the game got away from him the first time these two teams played. And as a result, they don't want Loyola to get rolling. And so the timeouts are a tactical thing to try to make the game a little bit more choppy so Loyola doesn't get on a roll. Tramel Murphy will launch that one drop. He's the knee for over a year, yet he continues to be out there. Only played a handful of uh, games last season. The knee issue. Now he is back. A senior from Griffith, Indiana. There's number two for the blue of the Bulldogs. Hall on top. Shot clock at 10. Norris has had his fingerprints on this one. Murphy comes out there to defend. Shot clock at three. Screen right there by Hudson. And the mid-range shot won't go. The block almost had it. It's picked up by Sturts. And here come the Bulldogs. That was a good shot mm -hmm. at the end of the shot clock. But uh, Loyola, they didn't get to the end of the shot clock. Doesn't bother them. Wilkins on the front line. Sturts with a nice rebound. He now comes in as a starter because of uh, Shen Kwan Hemphill's injury. They think that Hemphill, the leading scorer, after fracturing his foot, having surgery, if they make the tournament, could return next week or two weeks from now. Outside, three. Got it! Oh, 
big shot. Yesifu hits his second triple. Well, he was near the end. He was. Just there. I thought when he went up to shoot, that Ooh, is madness. Wow. But no, he knocked it down. He's got 10 only player in double figures. Regular season champion, Loyola Chicago. Hall. It's cutting down low. The freshman has it. Brody is there. He puts it up and over him. What a shot by Jacob Hudson. He had 13 in the win over Southern Illinois in the quarterfinals on Friday. He's got five today. Wow. That's been a big boost off the bench. Right hand to 15 wins in regular season conference play. Second place team, but a turnover right there. Another one. They only had two turnovers yesterday. The entire game. Turnovers have really hurt Drake today. They have. You're right. Dubois tried to take it in. Ball is knocked away. Shot clock at 20. Now coming up in the at and at the half, Greg, Clark, and Seth break down our first half and catch you up on the teams that have already punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament. That's coming up next on the at and at the half. Here quickly back in the game, Kevin. Rutwig is out there. And now North. Clemens with the ball became a starter midseason. Off on that 15 footer. Brody's got it. Well, Brody's got it, and he threw his weight around in there so much that he knocked his own teammate on the ground. Yes, a fool. Razor's one, but Brody Crutwig is there. Half minute to play in the first half. Leading score in the game, Yesifu with the ball. Working on Norris, boys. This is suffocating defense down low, and they all the shot. It was picked up by Hall. The other way come the Ramblers. Boy, if Crudwig is going to ignore Brody out at the top of the key, Brody's got to go to the basket. Pickpocketing Yesifu. Sturge vacuums it in. Down court. They overshoot Murphy, who saves the ball. Wilkins, good as it goes. Down by 10, they crawl to within five at halftime. Two seed break, half. But the Bulldogs, with their opponent shooting 63%, they're still within five points. Here we go, starting the second half from St. Louis. The Ramblers will have it at 23 and 4 and 16 and 2 in conference play. They get it. Crutwig against Brody. Crutwig, player of the year in the conference. If you're just joining us, the rebound with nice defense there by Darnell Brody, a junior from Newark, New Jersey. And again, that's what Brody has to do. Just stay between Crutwig and the basket. Force Crutwig to shoot that little jump hook. Drake with their second trip to the tournament championship game. The last time they were here, 2008. Sturge, shot clock at five. Down low, Murphy. The block is defending. Got it! Wow, he used every second on that offensive possession to watch it drop. Now that was a really good offensive possession. They spread the court. They didn't panic when the shot clock was running down. Murphy, he had a big game yesterday. He's had another one today. Loyola has won 15 of 16 games. A block inside. A lot of pressure, but he got it to go over Sturts. A block has been much more aggressive offensively over the last few games. He's got about a five-inch height advantage over Sturts inside, and he used it. Yes, it's true. He's got 10. Murphy's got 10 to lead. The shorthanded Bulldogs. The bench has been on scored handily today, but no surprise because of the injury. Six to five. Yes, it's true. Crutwick the rebound. Here comes Braden Norris. Norris, three. Well, he's got a quick trigger. He does. Nice. Good. Had an accurate shot. He's got a couple threes. He's got 11 points. Three of five from distance for Braden Norris. Transfer from Oakland University. Switch on defense. 
Wilkins against the block who picks up the foul as he was trying to shuffle alongside the smaller and shiftier DJ Wilkins. Well, we're talking about Norris, and all he does, uh, he just steps to the open spot. That's a nice job by Clemens. Clemens draws two guys toward him. Norris steps into the open shot, is able to catch the three, and able to catch the pass and easily launch the three. Drake comes in with six quad one or quad two wins. Nice scoop there. 12 points for Tremel Murphy. The Bulldogs have to dig in on defense here. Front wig and Brody. They don't double. Nice defense by Brody on the point. I think it's dangerous to double front wig. And Brody has done a pretty nice job so far in those one-on-one -on -one situations. Wilkins will try to knife his way inside. Cutwick comes up with it. Good defense by Clemens. Here come the Ramblers. Well, what great balance. Mm -hmm. Great hands by Cutwick. <laughs> I don't know how he's able to stand up. Good point. I think he's going to pick up an offensive foul this time, though. He is. He's mad at himself. You, you made an interesting... Oh, no, no, that was Ugwok, I think, who picked up the foul. You're right, it was him. You made a good point about Crutwig, which uh, Coach uh, Moser was talking about yesterday. He goes, you're the first guy that's ever talked about him being a, a guy who does not dislodge, but leans, and he has kind of a feel when he plays on defense. Well, he, he doesn't try to dislodge anybody, doesn't push anybody. He plays really, and he's like a verticality guy. Right. Well, that's positioning, game, right? That's yeah, and feel, and feel. Public has a great feel for the game. Here he's ignoring Brody up at the top, and if Brody is just going to stand there at the top of the key, that allows Crudwick to really clog up the lane. 6'9", Crudwick from Algonquin, Illinois. Good block, by the way, good defense at the other end. He's got the ball right now. Outside, Williamson, got it! At the three, Lucas Williamson, the senior from Chicago. And that is his first shot attempt of the game. Isn't that something? He's averaged almost 13 points a game here over the last few. So he has been a big factor offensively in addition to his defensive prowess. But not today. He just picked up a foul right there, did the defensive. Gelton was really the first guy to get his conference organized with their basketball schedules. It was reference to the RPI, and they did such a good job at it. Remember Gary Williams accused him of breaking the RPI code? <laughs> <laughs> That's tough to do. <laughs> Big man up top here. Brody and Crutwick defending. Trying to get free. Wilkins working on Tate Hall. He just checks in. The little mid-ranger won't go. Look at the dive right there. Oh, by oh. Hall. Who comes the other way with the pass to Clemens who gets it. What a great play by Tate Hall. Yesifu down. He has been throwing his body all over the floor all tournament long. And he comes up hobbling like he did yesterday, and that is not a good sign. Well, Hall goes down on the court, and I oh. think Yesifu, he collided with his own teammate. That's he and Wilkins, but Hall, from his back, makes the pass. And since both of the guards for Drake are down, Clemens has an easy run to the basket, but Hall gets a knee in the back of the head. This is a great hustle play by Calder. Well, Calder. he did get in the back of the You're right, Dan. But there's three guys after the ball. The one guy who goes down on the floor is Hall, and he's the one who comes up with it. There's bowling pins all <laughs> falling there. I'm glad nobody was hurt. Boy, no kidding. It looked a lot worse than it actually was, but they're going to smart, certainly. That's easy for you to say. Yeah, it is. All the way up here, about four stories up. We are here, and that is good news. Biggest lead right now, Loyola. They are on top by 11. 14 assists on 19 made baskets for the Ramblers. That is efficiency. Yes, sir. From shot clock at three. Switch on D. Crutwich on him. There's a three over the big man. He got inside a block. Crutwich does a nice job contesting that shot. Normally a guard would like to drive by, but the shot clock was running. Crutwich, he saw he had the mismatch and takes advantage of it inside with the leader. At that time, Brody did not force Crutwick to shoot over top. Crutwick gave the little fake and got in for the layup. And we're going to get a timeout here. The harmonica playing Cameron Crutwick to come off the bench, but they all play starters minutes. The top seven guys do. Well, they do, and, and it was really a good move because Clemens plays much better as a starter than coming off the bench, and it's just Porter Mosier putting his team together.
Good point. Front wing. Brody has it with a spinner. Defended by Crutwick. He will pick up a foul. 7 nothing run. Right now by Loyola. Their largest lead, as we said. Efficiency on their offense. With 15 assists on 20 made field goals. You know, it's interesting about the Loyola defense, Dan. In the tournament, the first two games, they only gave up 49 points in each of those first two games. Today, they've given up 35 against the number one shooting team in the Valley. New Thursday, Agent Billy Starling is back and ready to dive into the minds of monsters and madmen. Silence is over, but her story is only beginning. Watch a new Clarice, Thursday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. No bench points yet for Drake. No surprise. Their starters play a lot. In fact, they've only gotten five bench minutes. Right, there's only two guys who played off the bench. One's played three. The other's played two minutes. And so one of the things you're Drake that you might want to try to do is exert some full court pressure. But I just don't know that you can do it just playing these five guys. Drake began the season 18 and 0. Who block inside and picked up by Tremel Murphy. They had five games postponed. They were 14 0, came back 1 4, went 18 0. Then they lost uh, their leading score and their leading assist man. Wilkins, Brody, doubled, knocked away inside and fouled by Keith Clemens of Loyola. Clemens had the right idea, but you, you got to get the ball while the big guy's dribbling. And Kevin, we were talking about Clemens. Since he has, since he started, he's been averaging almost nine points a game and shooting 51% from the field. Before he was a starter, he only averaged four points a game. So, again, if you're Porter Mosier as the coach, you got to find, it doesn't matter who starts, you got to find out how the pieces fit together the most efficiently. Yes, a food. Single digits on the shot clock. Norris is there. Yes, a on the floor. Rebound by the big man inside, Darnell Brody. Shuffling, carving, spinning, pulling the trigger. Got it to go. What a play. Brody stuck with it and got two. Here, Derek DeVries is telling his guys to get up and press. Yeah, here they go. But they got to do something to disrupt Loyola. And there they get a turnover. Wilkins, who block is there. Three. Chuckwick inhales the rebound. Tate Hall. Loyola Dan shooting 62% for the game. Break 38%. The game is much easier when the ball goes in the basket, and it's been going in the basket for Loyola, but a lot of that has to do with the kind of shots they've created for themselves. Ball down low. Quickly across the lane. A gentle touch for the deuce. Boy, that time he just powered his way to the basket. on top of the 17 footer. Who blocked his there? He is the transfer from New Mexico. He's got it right here. He's number one seed to win this tournament. As Rayola, nice shot outside. It's another three, and it was hammered in that time by Clemens. Largest lead. And a whistle. And a timeout. Loyola beginning to pull away. The number 20 team in the country. The number one run by the Ramblers. Loyola Dan has made their last five consecutive three-point shots. And if Loyola's going to make three, is, they are really, really tough. Again, they guard you so aggressively. Darnell Brody. Fretwood is there. Reaching in Williamson. Shot is off. Rebound by Clemens. And that's the perfect example of Crudwick playing defense. He just doesn't bang. He holds his position. He doesn't lean. He doesn't push. He forces his opponent to shoot up over top. And he gets the defensive stop. Oh, nice spin move right here. He spins again. And the ball spins out. I did spun right out of there. But boy, he had the open shot because of that good footwork, which we've seen for four years in a Rambo uniform. Skirts inside, three to foul. The four to foul. 
Craig is only a 37% shooting, 63% shooting for Loyola. There's the back of the halfway mark of the second half. The winner, automatic birth to the NCAA tournament. Williamson, Crutwig, there's a foul. Offensive foul, he hooked it, Crutwig. He's had double-doubles in four of his last nine games. Coach Moser watching one-time assistant to Rick Majerus here in St. Louis at St. Louis U. Well, and you can see he got that elbow out there. and <laughs> looked at chicken wing, huh? Well, and the view that we just saw is the exact view that the referee had. It's hard for a referee not to see that one. Well, we got three good ones here today. <laughs> last time, Drake made the NCAA tournament was 2008. They were in the final four, this wonderful little school from Des Moines, Iowa. So they're trying to get into the tournament for just the second time in nearly 40 years. Running inside, yes or three. Nope. Van Hall is there to grab it. Uh, final four appearance, that was what, 1969? Maury John was the U coach, U yes. UCLA they played. My mom and dad grew up in Des Moines and just was informed today my mom was a former Miss Drake. That's out of bounds and a turnover for Loyola. So how is Drake, and they're struggling right now. We got half of the second half to go, but Kevin, there's there's plenty of how time. They, how how are they going to the game? What they have to be able to do is make Loyola more uncomfortable on offense. It would be nice if they could force some turnovers, but we just showed you they're two for their last ten. Obviously, they have to shoot the ball better, and that's tough against this Loyola defense when the Ramblers can get set. Yesifu tries to penetrate, hit by three. Sturts will follow. Got the miss, missed it inside, knocked away by Hudson, taking the place. Oh, what a move! Little uh, Euro step right there by Uglock for Bendington, Alberta. That's a foul. Did it go on Wilkins, perhaps? It did go on Wilkins. Of break. And the question that the officials were talking about was whether that was a shooting foul or a non-shooting foul. Look at this nice little shifty move right here to snake his way. Right. You could clearly see that he got hit on the elbow, but I think that's a really good decision. He was not ready to shoot that ball yet. He had to collect it. Braden Norris, another three. Norris has been hitting from outside all day long. He's got four three-point shots. 14 points, the game's leading score. All newcomer team. Braden Norris, the transfer from Oakland University. On the deck they go. That's an open triple right down the hatchet ball. Well, that's not exactly the way you drew up that play, but it worked very well, and that's all that Drake is concerned about right now. Williamson dashes around the screen by Hudson. Can't hit the J. Picked up by Donnell Brody. If you're Drake, you simply can't rely on Loyola missing easy shots. That was a wide open shot by Williamson. But what a pass. Get the ball, pass. Get the ball inside, an opportunity for a three-point play. You have to attack on the offensive end. It's a really nice pass, a nice mismatch inside. Tramel Murphy got it, but the pass came off of Darnell Brody, a big man with a nice gentle lob pass like that. Fun to watch. Uh, Murphy with a about with about a six-inch height advantage inside against Norris, and so you're right, Brody placed that ball perfectly. Hold on to the third most wins and their program's history, second most in college basketball, as we mentioned before, behind Belmont's 26, Drake has 25. They battled COVID, they've lost two of their top players, two starters, the top scorer, the top assist man, that in here in the final, as the two seed chiseling inside Clemens, there's a whistle. Now, if you're Drake, you want to be aggressive on defense, but you, 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 you don't, you're not desperate enough to start fouling right now. Drake is, is very good at position defense, and that's what they have to do. They still have time. They don't have to panic. They just have to play good, solid defense and then rebound the misses. Yes, if we pick up the foul, nice defense by Darnell Brody. Good possession right here, Dan. Single digits. It'll make a different mindset and make that path a bit easier to navigate as they look at the final eight minutes. 
Down by 11. Yeshifu driving up and off. He thought he was tripped. He hits the deck. Then the other way comes Norris. That start in the 27, first 27 games of any year for Royal. Rebound by Murphy. It makes a difference with Crudwig if you move him just a couple of feet further from the basket. Three, cut it! Tramel Murphy knocks down the three, and the deficit is eight. Nine-nothing run by the Bulldogs. Timeout Loyola. A lot is job in coordinating this. It's a new world in broadcasting we're all working with, and all of our camera men and women and people in the truck doing a terrific job with a lot of different protocols in place. That was poked away. Nesifu trying to get it. Oh, they're playing a game of Twister, and they'll call a tie-up. I love it. And Drake on the possession arrow. You don't think this game means something to these kids? My goodness. Technical foul. Well, I think they called a technical foul on Yesifu. You know, in that scramble, he had something to say to Norris. And boy, what a mistake that is. I, I mean, I, the kids are very emotional, and they're really down there struggling, and Yesifu has something to say to them. And I know, I, I know that this is very important, and there's a lot of pressure on these kids, but that's, you just have to maintain control. Ray Norris at the line. <laughs> hmm. He had made 16 straight coming in. Yes, he had. That's only the second free throw taken by Loyal. You've talked about that, Dan. That's amazing to me that this deep in a game with these kind of consequences... And have so few taken by the number one seed at that. Well, but Drake has played defense yes, they have. without fouling. But again, with Loyola shooting the ball so well, maybe, you know, you needed to be a little bit more aggressive on defense. But so only one point. Yes, if we only cost them one point, but they, they still have the ball. That was a great... Great hustle play by Yesifu to force that held ball. Yesifu is only 3 of 13. He's got it right now. He's got 10 points. Murphy's got 18. Here, spinning Gerald at Wilkins now. Donald Brody had it. Torn away. Shot clock violation. Good Rambler defense. Loyola comes up with one of their calling cards. Defense showing right there. And Coach Moser loves it. But well, that was great defense by Hall, but then Crudwick came over to help out, so Brody got the offensive rebound, and then it was great defense by Clemens to take the ball away from Brody. When you're a big guy with an offensive rebound, you don't want to dribble it. Take the ball right back up. Williamson has it right now. He and Crudwick, the winningest four-year players in school history. See, we're all in a bit of a scoring drought. The only point they scored in almost three minutes was that technical free throw. Fighting through this screen, Yesifu. Wilkins on the wing watching Clemens. Norris has it, shot clock at six. No screen, he'll dance. Yesifu there, here's the three. Missed it all, but we got it. They're going to look at that. They're going to have to. Championship game. It's great for them, Kevin, and you know, it, it, it's great for the consortiums because this consortium works under the Big 12, so they are getting the luxury of having those primary officials come down and work these mid-majors, and it's a great thing for basketball and officiating specifically. Excellent, Gene. Thank you. 9-1 run for 2C Drake. Wilkins outside, got the screen, starts back on to Wilkins. The bump, the feed, shot clock, plenty of time as they work it around. Starts. Dashing the defense of Norris. Can't get it to drop. And Crutwig is right there with the rebound. That's an outstanding defensive job by Norris. Just moving his feet and staying in front of Sturts. Forcing a difficult shot. Under six to go. The winner punches a ticket to the NCAA tournament. Well, look at this defensive intensity. Wow. It was something up by Murphy. 
And Murphy is going to get called for a foul. The signal Jerry Pollard is giving is that's a cylinder play. And what that means is, think about Star Trek, Kevin, right? And the guy's trying to beam up. They say, okay, beam me up, and they get this little cylinder of uh, light that comes around them. And if you get inside that cylinder of light, then it's a foul. When you make contact. Norris. Nice move to get free. Look right there. He's in a straight kick. A lot of bodies, a lot of shoving, and a foul. Brody, I believe. But that's one of the few times, Kevin, that you'll see Crutwig not really catch it cleanly on the inside. That was a nice pass. Crutwig at the stripe. He's put up some incredibly good historic numbers. The CBS Sports app is your destination for the biggest events, highlights, and breaking news. Download the app today and watch everything from CBS Sports in one place. He has numbers over his career, points, rebounds, assists, that the likes of Oscar Robertson, Larry Bird, Percy Hawkins have accumulated in this historic conference. Well, and they're the, only, company. they're the only guys to accumulate that in this right. conference. And so, yes, that is excellent company. When you can be mentioned with just one of those guys, it's a real feat. But for all three of them, come on. Yes, a fool. Sturts. And it's Murphy with 18 points. Now he's got 20. Bring it up. Nine point game. Well, he just muscled his way. He did. <laughs> Lucas Williamson. Cut with a nice screen. Tried to get him inside. Luke Walk cleans it up and goes up. And grabbed the fresh shot clock with which door. I don't think Crutwick was making a pass there. I think he was just trying to not lose the ball. But it ended up being a great pass, and Woodwalk missed the shot. Shot clock at three. Into the cutting Williams and cut it. Oh, what a play! Slashing for two and fouled on the play. Kevin, we've been talking about the fact that Loyola is very comfortable playing at the end of the shot clock. No panic with Norris looking for an opportunity, and Williamson just makes a great cut, and that ball goes through the basket with one second left on the shot clock. So even with the shot clock running down, Loyola continues to move, and as a result, that may be a back-breaking three-point play. Brody has his third foul. It's up to a 12-point lead. Wilkins the bump. Two seed Drake and D DJ Wilkins tries to get one unleashed and he does. Well, Wilkins had to work for that. Sure did. He's got a quickness advantage over Norris, but Norris did such a nice job moving his feet, playing great position defense. Kevin, and we've been talking all day long about how important this was in terms of the NCAA tournament. And, you know, we said you don't want to leave the thing in the hands of the committee. And right. Drake, Drake is, you know, they're getting themselves pretty closely in that position. They've had a great season. Norris, three. Bullseye! Another three. Five is rung up today. 18 for the game. Drayton Norris. Now, most people feel like Drake is on the bubble. Our Jerry Palm has him as one of the last four in. Logan's got the loose ball. And there the slam by Brody. Well, we talked about the quad one and two wins that Drake has. There are six. This would, of course, end the Drake season. Drake is going to get, they think, in two weeks, their leading scorer back, a team that began 18-0. They're 25-3, second most wins in college basketball. 
and they played a lot of quad one and two games in their six and one in those categories as we just mentioned now part of the problem for them is uh, you say they've played a lot of quad one and two games but most of those games were quad two games but it's hard for people in the valley particularly with the limited non-conference season to play a lot of quad one games knocked out six seconds on the shot clock two and a half in the game and you mentioned that Tank Hemphill is their leading scorer and rebounder, and he broke his foot. He had surgery. When he had the surgery, they're expecting him back in four weeks, and that would be in time for the postseason. Brady Norris, this three, and picked up by Darnell Brody. They were hoping they would have him back for this tournament, but that didn't happen. This is an experienced great team, too. The average age of the starting five when healthy, 23 years old. Wilkins three. They're still breathing. Man, they've got, you've got to force some turnovers yep. now. You cannot allow Loyola to run the shot clock down. And that's that's not a bad foul right there because Crutwig, with all the other things he does very well, he's not a great free throw shooter. That's the seventh team foul, and so it'll be a one and one situation. So you have at least three opportunities here to force Loyola to go to the line and make one and ones. Crutwig at the line. Talking to the head coach of the Ramblers, Porter Moser, in his 10th year yesterday. And I asked him about, you know, reaching the Final Four back in 2018. He said, you know, when I first got to Loyola, I used to drive down Lakeshore Drive, and I'd see these buildings lit up with the, the colors of the Chicago Cubs. He said, I knew we arrived, and we made that Final Four in 18, and they had art colors on a lot of the lit up buildings in downtown Chicago. That's a pretty good story. Well, you go to the Final Four, you get people's attention. You better believe it. And one of the things this Loyola team, people are always asking, was well, this a better team than the Final Four? Team? Right, yes. You know, that's that's really an unfair comparison. Nice play. It's hard to make a comparison with a team that went to the Final Four until you actually get there. Yazifu hits the deck, got it to drop. One timeout for Drake. Yesifu just has not been an offensive factor here in the second half. He was in the first half, and you got to wonder, maybe all those minutes he's played finally caught up to him. And he's been hobbled, too. He had cramps yesterday. Nice curl inside, and Crutwig gets it to go. Crutwig will miss very few of those. He might miss them when he's got to shoot over top of somebody, but he's not going to miss very many of those. How about his line today, Dan? 18 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. <laughs> well, Kevin, that's what we're talking about. Those are the kind of numbers that he's been able to put up throughout his career. Norris just picked up a, a foul for the Ramblers at the line. D.J. Wilkins. Of course, this is great news if you're Drake. You'd like to score with the clock stop. They will. If you make the second one, you can set your set your press. Drake short-handed, we saw it a couple times, but it bears repeating. They have no bench points today, and only two guys off the bench that have played. Crutwig catch the ball and foul it. Samaka is now in for the Bulldogs. He's while watching Crump, Crutwig. And on the wing, they got Clemens. So you don't have time for this. No. Nope. Gotta get out there and grab him, right? Well, you gotta grab Crutwig. And they do. And it was done by the player that just checked in. He says Samaka. So here's Crutwig. And you look at the landscape and the history of this very rich conference history that includes names like Robertson, Bird, and a Bradley Hersey Hawkins. And Crutwig, a four-year player, part of a Final Four team. Has his name up there with those other greats. Crutwig. I was just talking about how he's the guy you want to foul, but obviously not today. <laughs> he's, he's made all five of his free throws. Yep. Megan Moser, the Lines of head coach Porter. Royal. Under a minute to go. The lead is 10. T. Hall's kept it. 
Howard is out. And Wilkins has the ball. Well, press the issue. Nice side step and move. Takes it in. Deceptive play. Got the deuce. Eight point game. Well, you got to get steals and threes now. Oh, what great ball for Kennedy. Quick foul. Wilkins with the grab. He'll pick it up. When you look at this incredible span that Loyola is a part of right now, they've had three of the last four conference players of the year. Crutwick this year, Marcus Towns, and Clayton Custer as part of that final four team. Back in 2018, nice move. Murphy inside, and it skirts. Uh, Kevin, I know it, right? Six point game. Leans and doing back. Quickly there, poked at by Yesifu. Well, you know, we're talking about how Crutwig was the guy who wanted to foul, and he's made all his free throws. Kennedy, the guy they fouled before, was an 85, 86% free throw shooter, and he missed the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. They're in the double bonus now. Norris comes in as an 84% free throw shooter. Warriors, he had a terrific day shooting. Five of nine from three. That 18 points. Megan Moser again watching. And her husband's program, the number 20 program right now in the AP Top 25. And I mentioned this back in the first half. They've been rated in that Top 25 for four straight weeks. They had not been rated in a poll during the regular season. Even in their final four run back in 18, they had not been in the poll since 1985. That's <laughs> incredible. It's been that long. But here's a school that... With Harvard are the two top schools in graduation rate. College basketball. Got him right there. Clemens is back in, taking the plays of Hall. You've got to go very quickly now. They're only trying to spread their defense, giving you a one-three-one look. Outside. Jackson putting up the shot. The block has the ball. Trying to try to settle him down as he comes up with the rebound, and they were poking at him, and they should. It's one of the big moments right here because Loyola seems to have grabbed this game by the throat. Now, Sturtz is in there mixing it up as he normally is, but that's just a really good rebound on the inside. And Ugwok is the guy who, you know, he's, he's learned how to rebound in traffic. He's learned how to score in traffic. Loyola at 23 and 4 has their best 27 game start to a season going back to 1962 and 63. So they continue to put up historically good numbers in this conference. And Coach Moser, one of the few people in the history of this conference who has won a Missouri Valley Conference tournament championship game as a player at Creighton and as a coach. He did back in 18 with the Rambles. All back in, back and forth they go with Clemens, shuttling him in and out. Ten-point game. Outside, Wilkins triple. Williamson has it. That'll do it. Loyola, Chicago. The Missouri Valley Conference.